Anna is, um, she's a wonderful coach who works with people who feel lost, confused, disconnected with their health care. And she relieves overwhelm so that they can regain control of their health and their life. I mean, I just feel like in this day and age, this is such an amazing, amazing, amazing topic to talk about. And I'm just really curious, Lana, how did you get interested in really helping people to reconnect to their health care? Oh, wow. Um, we only have an hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been a nurse for over 30 years now, and it's been really interesting, especially here in the U.S., to watch the healthcare system and how it's changed. Um, and with healthcare as it is now, it's so overwhelming, and there's not, you know, our Doctors are rushed. Our nurses are rushed. Nobody's getting the information that they really need. Mm -hmm. um, and more importantly, the information that they want. Hey, Linda, it's good to see you here. Um, <laughs> oh, and Kristen, hey. Gosh, long time, no see. Um, but, you know, as, with, as overwhelming as healthcare is, whether it's a new diagnosis or a chronic condition, we sometimes just have to take a step back, take a breath, and start moving forward. So, you know, when you realize that, then you realize how you can make small changes that make a big difference. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. Um, just being able to take the step back sometimes is the hardest part. Um, geez, I'm supposed to be recharging my phone. What's going on? <laughs> Hang on one sec. Why is that not recharging? All right, don't worry. It's all gonna be fine. Sorry. This is technology. We're all learning, by the way. You know, these Facebook Lives are something really new and uh, we're really learning how to make the most of them. <laughs> So I found, I just did a cool little hack for my phone while it's charging while we're talking. Um, you know, what I did was I took a flower pot and just put the charging cord up through the little hole in the bottom of the flower pot. And I have it on little stands so that it's still lifted up enough. So I've got my phone where we can see it and it's charging and it's awesome. That's the first time I've done that too. So see, a night of first. It's amazing, it's amazing. So just back to the topic though. I mean, um, what I'm curious about is, um, this disconnection between, yeah. you know, it seems so obvious, especially back in the States today. You know, one of the things that my viewers know about me is that I'm really interested in like natural medicine and trying to find mm -hmm. natural solutions to our uh, health problems uh, that come out. So I, living here in Panama, I can see how healthcare is very different here. It may be a little bit um, behind the times, but in some ways and in some aspects, it's almost like the United States has become so advanced and our Western world has become so advanced that it's just treating the symptoms instead of really treating the, mm -hmm. the, um, the causes. And so I'm really curious about this, dis this disconnect and, and how you see that really affecting people. <clears throat> yeah, you know, with the disconnect, and you're right, we are, um, we are disease management here in the States, and the, there is a natural wave towards more natural treatments again, which is really cool. Um, there's a little bit of pushback from mainstream medicine, mm -hmm. but I think as we keep moving in that direction, um, and the more we as consumers of healthcare <clears throat> voice our opinions and voice our desires and our wants for a more natural solution, the more it will be, you know, the more it will be heard. Um, I am a huge proponent of functional medicine, which is getting to the root cause of the disease yeah. um, instead of the symptoms. So if we can get to the root cause and we can understand what those are, whether it's an actual disease process, if it's lifestyle management, if it's stress, which it usually comes down to stress or emotional trauma, um, those are things, if we deal with those, then we find that dealing with the actual health 
becomes a lot easier. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Naomi and to Fritz. It's great to see you guys here today as we talk about healthcare and overwhelm. Um, I, well, so one of the things that you help people with is actually get out of the overwhelm um, mm -hmm. with dealing with their health so that they can actually begin to live and enjoy their life. What is overwhelm? Overwhelm is that feeling of stagnation. You just can't move forward because you have so much that you're dealing with. Um, if you think about it like a balloon, Okay. You know, you've got a balloon and you keep blowing up the balloon and you blow it up and you blow it up. And at some point, just the air, it's either going to stop getting bigger or it's going to burst. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to burst. But that overwhelm is that point where you just can't get anything else in there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just need to release the air just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Release it in, in little segments and little pieces so that we take away those things that, you know, is it really something we have to be worrying about or is it something we choose to worry about? What a distinction. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot that we can let go of. I'm going to say hey to Vicki. Um, there's a lot we can let go of because, you know, in the day to day, is it that important or is it something we're choosing to hang on to? Mm. Mm. That's, that's kind of profound, actually, you know, that we're choosing to hang on to things that give us overwhelm, that give us stress. Do you think that we're conscious of that a lot of times, that we're actually hanging on to it? It feels like that's one of those things that just gets kind of hidden inside of us. And we're like, it's, it's almost like, I don't know, it feels like we're so used to it that it doesn't mm -hmm. feel, feel like we're doing anything really. You know, we're just, it's just is. Yeah. It's just a fact of life that I'm worried about yeah. my health. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what it is. It's just, you know, if you think about those things, you know, I mean, for me, I get overwhelmed um, with office clutter sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, th and that's a big part of my life because I spend a lot of my time in my office. Mm -hmm. But if I can just say, you know, first I have the choice, I can live with the clutter and continue to be overwhelmed, or I can choose to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. The unconscious part of it is that sometimes I get so used to it and I know where every piece of paper is in the midst of it that I don't want to upset that little, the apple cart. Yeah. So I choose to remain in the clutter when it's really not the healthiest choice for me. It's when I realize that I'm overwhelmed by it and I start to let go of some of it, throw away those pieces of paper that I don't need anymore, put away the other ones and keep the ones that are most important to me that are most important now in front of me. That's when the overwhelm is relieved. So what is the overwhelm doing to our bodies? Ooh, great question. You know, overwhelm, with, it's causing stress is what it's doing. And when we're stressed, <clears throat> we, our immune system is suppressed. And that's probably one of the biggest things that we see. And when our immune system is suppressed, we're more susceptible. We're able to, well, we're not able, but we do get more infections, more illnesses, whether it's a common, one, a common cold. It can be um, hypertension, high blood pressure. Um, you name it, you know, stress opens our bodies up for those, you know, those little bugs get in there and they're opportunistic. They, and they get in there and they have a party. We don't want that. We want our bodies to remain in a calm state, that state of homeostasis, to balance it all out. Wow. Wow. Just a little bit of overwhelm can do all that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know from my own experience, it's like, it's almost like it becomes a little bit natural to, to just be going, going, going and, mm -hmm. um, and not really taking the, maybe the breaks that we need throughout the day. So I, I feel like yes. there can be lots of different kinds of overwhelm, like the overwhelm of overdoing 
or the mm -hmm. overwhelm of the clutter, like you mentioned, or the overwhelm of different commitments. You know, mm -hmm. I want to say hi to Jean and Bruce. Really nice to see you. Bruce, a friend from Panama right here. Nice to see you in the house. So, I mean, it feels like overwhelm can be a lot of different things. It's, it mm -hmm. sounds like it could be almost anything. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's, and when you're overwhelmed, you know, one of the first signs that, you know, for me personally, that I, when I'm starting to feel that overwhelm is, well, one, lack of focus. I mean, I just oh, good. can't tune into any one thing. And, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, squirrel with a nut and, oh, there's another nut over here. And you just keep going from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. So that lack of focus and the other thing that I notice when I start to get overwhelmed is that my body temperature rises just a little bit. Mm. And then, you know, my breathing gets a little bit different. And that's when you're really in tune with your body signals. Um, and, you know, the heart rate may go up a little bit more because it's working a little bit harder, trying to bring that stress level down. Wow. So, you know, one thing that we don't do very well in traditional medicine is um, really listen to each of you, know, our personal bodies, and listen to the story that our body's telling us. Is that so, something that you help your clients learn how to do, to listen to the body? Yeah, yeah, I, we have to, and we have to be able to speak that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, if you really tune into your body, you can tell when you're starting to feel just inch up just a little bit. And if you can take the step back, if you catch it right then, just take a minute to take a couple of deep breaths, then it's a lot easier to manage it. Yeah. Hey, Randy, nice to see you here tonight. So the deep breaths, I mean, that's a really big deal, you know, just that simple, yeah. simple tool. So what, what is it that we should be looking for in our bodies? How can we scan our bodies to really tune into if we are moving into overwhelm or if we're really in this beautiful homeostasis place? Um, what I like to do is I really, I will either sit in a comfortable position or sometimes, it sounds weird, and I think some of my, hey, Crystal, um, some of my neighbors probably think I'm a little weird sometimes, but I'll go outside and stand in the middle of my backyard um, barefoot in the grass mm -hmm. um, and just close your eyes and, you know, let your shoulders drop. And then just start to take some deep breaths and just bring it in through your whole body. Like bring it up through your toes and bring it up all the way up and release it and do a quick, it's like a body scan. You're feeling where you're feeling all of the parts of your body and you're bringing the oxygen into it and releasing the negatives out of it. Sorry, I really did have to plug in my phone. It's <laughs> <laughs> warning me 10%. Okay. Sorry. Oh, not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see. I saw what, what was wrong. I thought I had it all set up and I, I didn't. Yeah, you know, I love that. You know, going outside barefoot, that is such a big deal. Hi, Charlotte. Um, that's, that's great. And, you know, that's one of the things that I try to practice here is just to barefoot a little yeah. bit on the land and um, in, in places that I know are safe for me to walk. And, and I know that just that feeling of that connection of bare feet on the earth is something that is very, very, very nourishing. It, yeah. it, um, it refreshes me in a way that um, just breathing sometimes doesn't do. But the yeah. trick is, the trick is to take the time and to yeah. connect with that and say, okay, I need a break right now. I need to go outside and barefoot for a second, or I need to breathe deep. So how can we tune into when it's like getting to be that time of like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to, my balloon is going to burst in any second. I'm just curious, like how do, especially for those of us who aren't so tuned into our body, are there any triggers that are that are more? Is it like I need another cup of coffee? Is that a is that a signal maybe? Or um, like you said, the the lack of focus. 
I can see how that can really um, tie in because when I start to get overwhelmed, it's like, I, I need to do this and I need to do this and I need to do this and I'm going to sit down and try to do it. And then I sit down for like five minutes and I'm up again doing something else. So that's a signal right there. That's a signal. Um, yeah, it's really interesting um, because I know we all learn in school. Um, hey, Randall, it's good to see you here. Um, we learn as we're in, you know, middle school, high school education that our bodies have a normal sleep rhythm, our circadian rhythm. Um, our bodies also have a waking rhythm called the ultradian rhythm. And oh, I never heard of that. Yeah, and it's really, it's the same thing as the circadian rhythm, except it's while you're awake, and it's every 60 to 90, some people it's a, you know, a little bit longer um, minutes, every 60 to 90 minutes, and I judge it around 90 minutes, our body just needs a break. Oh it needs that little bit of time to say, you know, I'm here, I'm good, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, get up, walk around. Um, if you're on your computer, which, I mean, how many of us, to be honest, are on our computers all day? I know, I mean, I am a lot sometimes. Um, turn away from the computer. Break that cycle, break that trance that the computer gives you. Um, if you're playing video games, and we know our kids do it, at least mine does, and it's like, get up, walk around, stand up, you know, and you can do it while you're sitting there. And I tell people when they're, you know, studying for exams, you know, just move your arms a little bit. You don't have to do a lot, but just, you know, get your body moving. If you're sitting too long, your body's going to start to feel a little bit number and go to sleep. You want to get up, wake it up. And I can't, I can't stress how important that good deep breathing is. And how long do you recommend us to take a break after 90 minutes? That, you have to listen to your body. Some people, and I usually try to break for three to five minutes, um, okay. sometimes a little bit longer. Um, if I'm really stressed and I need a little bit more, um, I may take seven to 10 minutes. Um, but most, you know, when you're really in tune with your body, you can get it down to, even just a minute taking, most people breathe about 12 times a minute, but, you know, taking a good, you know, four or five good deep breaths. And when I mean deep, I mean deep, like bring it up, bring it out. And you autom almost automatically feel that release. Your shoulders start to drop down again after you're sitting there with your shoulders up and you just move forward. You get a whole lot more done by that way, too. Hmm. So my takeaway on that is about every 90 minutes, set your timer and allow yep. that to be um, your guide to move you forward, to move you into a place of breaking so that you can break the overwhelm that's, that could be coming up for you. Yeah, right. and move your body, yeah. breathe deeply. Mm -hmm. That sounds delicious. I know that when I breathe really deeply, it and I love breathing deeply, I can breathe all the way deep into my belly and it does, it's a reset. It's really a big reset for me. Yeah. yeah. But I know that it's, when we're in the groove, it's so hard to take that break. So I guess that's well, where really setting a telephone timer or something like that can be helpful. Hey, Manny, it's so good to see you here. Yeah, I just see that Melissa and Chris have joined us also. Hey there. It's so um, nice to have such a great group of people watching. I know from everywhere, too. That's awesome. So, yeah, you know, if I'm really in the groove um, and I'm really focused and I'm getting stuff done, Sometimes I'll let myself go a little bit longer because I don't want to break that trance or you know, get out of that groove. Um, but if I have my timer set, even if we're just a little chime, um, sometimes just taking a cup, taking those deep breaths right then and keep moving forward is okay. It's what your body is telling you that, you know, I'm in a good spot right now. Let's keep going. 
So in that, in that kind of an example, what we might be able to do is hear the chime go off on our phone, take just three deep breaths or so, and maybe just move our arms, move our, look around just a little bit, turn our head, and then come back to it. Yep. Even just that yeah. little bit is enough to just kind of reset us a little bit. It is because it's reminding your body that there's a little bit more out there. Um, and you know, it's just that power of just movement, that cross body movement with it, just taking your arms and stretching it. I mean, if you do it now, I mean, you can see, just feel that release. If you're yeah. sitting, if you're typing on the computer and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, yeah, it's it totally been an overwhelming day. It? So I feel that. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, stretch your arms backwards. I mean, it's, you know, get it, move it in different directions and you can do that and still be focused, but you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. Get that stretch in. And I love to do that mm -hmm. because it wakes you up also. And it just gives your, it gives your awesome. brain cells just that, just three seconds just to say, oh, yes, I'm still here and I'm doing a great job. Yeah, and even just those little stretches I just did, I can feel just a little bit more energy, a little bit more alertness. You know, um, that felt really good. Shoulders are a little more um, relaxed. <laughs> yeah. 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 It doesn't awesome. take much. Yeah. You know, and I think this is the thing, you know, when we're trying to regain control of our health, we think we really need to do all of these things, like these big, big, big things. And a lot of times it's just the simple acknowledgement, the simple, um, like you said, the body scan, understanding what it is that our body needs in the moment, and then um, taking those little tiny baby steps to give our body that nourishment, whatever it may be. Um, not to say that the big stuff, like, like going for a jog or, you know, having a meditation session or, um, you know, some of these other, you know, health protocols that we might be on aren't important, but it's the little things that count as well, right? Yeah. And, you know, I'm just going to throw out a little shout of acknowledgement here. I just saw that Susan Craig joined us um, on this te National Teacher's Day. Um, Susan is, I always tell everybody, she was my math teacher in high school. The best math teacher. I just adore her. Thank you for everything. Um, and, you know, sometimes just acknowledging and thanking people. Um, just, yeah. You know, it just makes you happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Judy, nice to see you here. So when we're, when we're taking, when we're, I, I'd love to know some of your top tips for really re, for, for regaining control of our health. Um, I'd just love to know what any of your top tips might be on that. Um, number one top tip. Susan says is, thanks. <laughs> I know. Oh, I can't tell you, Abby, how awesome, not only of a teacher, but as a person, she really is. Um, obviously made a huge difference for me and I know for many other people. So um, the top tip that I can give anybody for regaining control of their health is first off, accept yourself, accept where you are who you are right now. Um, and when you do that. So what do you mean you, by that? Can you just go into that a little bit more? I mean, what do you mean, except who you are and where you are? Hi, Sean. You know, who you are and where you are. Is I mean, that sounds the, a lot like the work that I do with Love Yourself Now. Well, you it know, is. Really it helping is. people to... <laughs> to find that, that acceptance, that self-acceptance. Yeah, you know, and it's absolutely what you do. And that's why what you do is so important. Um, but, you know, we're so pressured by society anymore to be, to live up to this perfect ideal. And there really is no perfect. 
And, you know, when we can move out of ourselves and out of that box and say, you know what, I am who I am. And I like who I am and I'm good where I am. There are going to be things, you know, that we always want to improve on and that's okay. But being who you are and being authentic in who you, you are is... I think, you know, the most important thing, it's the first thing that everybody should do. Um, and then you can take a good check, you know, what, you know, how am I treating myself? You know, am I loving myself? Am I giving myself that, the respect that I deserve? And, or am I putting too much on myself? So it all yeah. begins with you. Yeah. Yeah. It all begins it's with self acceptance and, and self responsibility. Self responsibility. Yeah. 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 Wow. So I could actually say that learning to love yourself actually improves your health, not just yes, your heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, your heart is a big component of your health. <laughs> well, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> A pretty darn big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I mean, just loving yourself. Hey, actually, Melanie, it, nice you know, to see you. Yeah, you know, it's... Go ahead. Your sorry. body responds better to being happy, to smiling. Put that smile on your face. You know, hugging, it's that physical touch. Everybody needs that. Um, and it's not just, you know, just once a day. You know, we need to be touched four to 12 times a day. Um, wow. And what that does, it, you know, that really, you know, releases the endorphins and your body functions at a better level, a higher level. So, you know, sometimes if you're alone and, you know, unfortunately in today's society, a lot of people are alone. It's okay to give yourself that hug. Give yourself yeah. a hug and, you know, pat yourself on the back and, you know, it's okay. Yeah. I love it. It all begins with you. <laughs> yeah, that's a great stretch too, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so your number one tip is accept who you are and where you are. Yeah. Okay, do you have another tip for us today? Um, know your body and know your triggers. Um, you know, because we all, um, you know, when we're looking at our health, there's always some kind of a trigger that starts us on that less than healthy path, whether it's stress or, um, you know, maybe we were ill in our childhood that maybe wasn't completely dealt with at that point, or we're just holding on to things. Let go of those things that you really, they don't make a difference. You know, if you're harboring that grudge from grade school, really? I mean, does it really make a difference? Is that something that you need in your life right now? Focus on the positives. Um, you know, the more, and just put a smile on your face. I like to, yeah. it's, well, people think I'm a little weird, but, you know, wake up with a smile on your face. Yeah, you know, so interesting. Hi, Damiana. I want to ask you, you know, so many of us aren't really tuned into our body at all. You mm -hmm. know, we don't know, yeah. we don't know, you know, who we are, what we do, but we're not really accepting of us. We've got a lot of that um, negative self-talk running around in our brain. Um, and a lot of people don't even know when they're triggered. Yeah. So how, how can somebody even start to dive into investigating when they're triggered, into understanding when they're triggered? Is it like <clears throat> when anger flares up or <clears throat> just, you know, just love to know some of your tips on that. You know, how can people get in? I guess the bigger question is how do people get in touch with their bodies and in touch with these emotions that are also so... Um, aligned with our health? Mm. Um, that's when you really have to pay attention. And yeah, you know, some of those triggers are, you know, we start to feel, some people will call it a buzz in their body. You know, you're starting to feel like things are ratching up a little bit. Um, and 
you may be a little short tempered. Um, you may be getting frustrated more easily. Some people will make sounds for myself. When I start to get overwhelmed, I sigh a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean, it's like, <sighs> it's like, I mean, it's just every other breath is a sigh. And that's my body's way of telling me, you know what, something's going on. I need to check in with myself and let's just release it. And because I know that if I'm holding it in, what's going to happen? I mean, nothing good is going to happen. Eventually, I'm just, you know, that little teapot's going to explode. And it gets pretty ugly at that point. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, so you want to, when you start to feel that little buzz, it's like, yeah, okay. I need to yeah. take a step back and just breathe. And then you can start to feel things go back down and you reach a more normal, stable level. Bob says, bingo. So there's some resonance to what you're saying. People are, people are feeling that. And th I guess that's, um, that's a really nice way to start to learn how to get in touch with your body. Hi, Jane. Um, just by really, I, I, I love what you said about the sigh. How, you know, you just sighed. And, and so yeah. you know that that is a sign from your body telling you that, okay, time to just take a break. I'm trying to think of like, what, what, what are my triggers? I sigh sometimes. I definitely, oh, I, you know what I find? I start <laughs> to get kind of frustrated. Mm -hmm. Frustration comes up for me. Yeah. And like, yeah, I feel so like when things are feeling... really working. Yeah. yeah. And what's that? Go even deeper. And what's your body? What, what part of your body are you feeling that in? Um, like my chest, like the whole like chest area just feels like constricted. Um, I feel, I, I feel like the frustration is like constricted in my chest and that, um, and then I'll start to, the frustration can even start to move into anger almost. Like, you know, and then, you, and what, you know what happens a lot of times is things start to go wrong. Like, like little technology things. And I blame it on the computer, but like I'm typing, I'm, I'm trying to type too fast or, and then I get frustrated at myself because you know, I'm making mistakes and I've got to stop and back up again. And so that's when I start to go, okay, wait a minute. You're getting ahead of yourself. You need to chill mm -hmm. out. But I think at that point, it's almost past the, um, the acknowledgement point. And I'm kind of getting deeper into that overwhelm at that point. So finding finding how to um, breathe into that. Naomi says, how do you release the frustration, anger, and sadness? Is there any specific practices or stra strategies for that? That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. And the first strategy is, you know, to check in. You, as soon as you recognize it, um, how do you release it? You acknowledge it first. And you... What I do is I kind of have a conversation, usually just in my brain, because people think I'm a little weird if I'm doing it out loud, but I'll have a conversation with myself. It's like, hey, what's going on? You know, I, I sense a little frustration with myself. What's causing that, fr that frustration? You know, it's okay for you to be here. You know, you're here for a reason because you're telling me. Yeah. that there's something going on and I'm okay that you're here, mm -hmm. but I'd like to know why you're here. And then when you see yourself coming down, it's like, ah, you know what? Thank you for coming here. Thank you for showing me that. Now the door is behind me. You know, it's okay for you to leave. Naomi says, I know I'm triggered when I am defending myself in my mind shatter and I get back to the present by doing counted deep breathing 
and mm -hmm. look at the specific points in the room. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, I do, I like to do the four square big breathing, um, which, you know, you breathe in for a count of four. Can we try it together? It. Can you show us how to do it? Sure. So let me get comfortable. Well, let me get my feet on the ground. I like to always put my feet on the ground. Okay. Um, you know, it's that, that grounding connection. And I always, I like to just close my eyes and get comfortable. And then just breathe in for a count of four. One, two, three, four. And hold it. Release it for four. And hold it. And keep that cycle going. Take a good deep breath in. And hold it and just release it. And it's okay if you let the sound out. The And when you're releasing it, you actually, what you're also releasing is not just your breath, but also that frustration mm. and that tension mm. and all those little voices that are inside of you. And you're calming your entire body down. That was fabulous. That was so quick, but so effective. Yeah, it doesn't have to take long. Um, some people, you know, will actually you breathe in and hold and breathe out at your own pace. Some people are a little bit quicker. Some people are a little bit slower. Um, I find the more I do it, I may start off at a count of four, and then I go to five or six to nine. And it's what you're listening to your body and what your body needs and what your body is open to. Yeah, that's a good question. Hey, Rich. Hi, Julie. Nice to see you guys here tonight. We're talking about overwhelm. Yeah, we're just learning some breathing techniques. So awesome. Lana, I have a question about the breathing. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there is such a there's there's such a difference when we breathe in, out, in, out to when we breathe in, hold, release, hold. What is that holding actually doing? in our bodies that makes such a difference i'm curious um gosh you're asking i can't the technical terms i'm not going to remember but what that's, you're doing that's okay is, mm -hmm. <laughs> i know <laughs> you're actually giving it time to acknowledge it and you know you're breathing in it's you're letting you know if you think about it it's just releasing through your body it, gathering it up and releasing it out and what it's doing is it's actually slowing down your breathing. So if you yeah. think about it, you're slowing it down. And when you slow it down, things get calmer. Yeah, yeah. And as you get calmer, that's where that holding, that little pattern comes in is that you're just, instead of, <sighs> you're not able to clear everything out bringing it in, relax, breathe in and relax. Yeah, that feels great. <laughs> that feels so good. I know, getting comfortable. <laughs> Can we just do that? <laughs> just breathe for a little bit longer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm wondering if anyone here on uh, that's watching has any uh, questions about overwhelm or you know, how you, I'd love to know how you deal with your own overwhelm. So if you want to share that in the comments, it'd be really fun to see kind of what your techniques are. Because I think that it's really personal. Like you said, it's, we got to know our bodies okay. first, and then we know how we can really, really react and um, help it come out of that overwhelm and back into that calm space. So while people are, are typing in the comments, if they choose to do so, do you think that there's, there's just some people that just function better in overwhelm? You know, I mean, I remember when I was in corporate America, 
I was an awesome multitasker. I mean, like people would walk into my office and I'd be typing an email and I'd have that thought in my head and I would continue typing those words that were in my head while I was listening to them. And honestly, I thought I was good at it. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> How could anybody be good at that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> You know, some people do work at a higher state. Um, and yeah, I think that we, you know, I think we do all do at some point. Um, I think, though, if you look, because I'm a good example, I used to be like that too. And now my, you know, I've come to realize that was that really serving me in a healthy way um, or was it just starting to build things up and adding that stress level in and now that I'm not in the corporate world anymore I find I'm much calmer um, and those things that might have bothered me before don't bother me as much anymore mm -hmm. Um, you know, even when you're multitasking, you may be, you're still doing only one thing at a time. You've just got things in the background, that ambient noise, but you're still really only doing one thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can you're see that. You're focusing on that one thing. Um, but we've trained ourselves to think that, you know, we are doing more than one thing. I mean, sometimes, yes. Can we eat and read at the same time? Yes. That is multitasking. But are we really focusing? If we're reading and eating at the same time, are we really focusing on how good the food tastes or on what the storyline is of what we're reading? Mm. Or are we just skimming the surface of both? And do you think doing things like that, like reading while you're eating your meal, is that contributing to our overwhelm in some, uh, on some level, do you think? You know, or I is think that just doing, really dependent on the person? You know, I think it's dependent on the person, but I think when we do that, when we're doing more than one thing at the same time, we're, my personal belief is that we're lo missing some of the enjoyment of one or the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, think about it. When was the last time you really focused on what you were eating and how that tasted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I have a bad habit of that, actually, because I, I live alone. And so, you know, I'll grab my phone with my meal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really want to put it away and put it aside. But there is that little bit of that addiction. And, and, and I can see how, how that can contribute a little bit to my overwhelm because it's keeping my mind constantly stimulated um, mm -hmm. in this period of quote unquote rest while I'm having my meal. And so you're really inspiring me right now to, to like actually put the phone in the drawer, sit down, put a placemat and eat my food. And, um, just do that. I think, I think that actually could go a long way. Yeah. Yeah. And taste your food, mm -hmm. you know, really taste it. What, and think about, you know, what, what is that saying to you? Um, you know, there's an exercise sometimes that we'll do with a piece of chocolate. Just what, what does that smell? What does that remind you of? Um, what does the taste remind you of? What memories does it bring back for you? Um, but if you're reading while you're doing that, you're not getting the full sensation and your brain is going in different directions. So allowing it to focus and enjoy. Yeah, love it. So Naomi, Naomi is saying, looking like, oops, am I talking on top of you? I'm sorry, the video keeps um, pausing. <laughs> on my end, so I'm sorry. Um, Naomi's saying, I deal with overwhelm by writing lists of everything I'm dealing with, then prioritizing and putting doable actions in my calendar. That's so perfect. If I have a frustration or a conflict, yeah. I get curious about what I actually want and make a clear co-creative request for the good of all concerned. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. She's an advanced student, this Naomi. <laughs> yeah. She should be on this side of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have. Yeah, I like the list. I actually, um, I'm not going to show you because <laughs> I have lists all over my office. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing you I actually write them on sticky notes, and then I'll start to move them around as things get done, or I see a different pattern in them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's that doable action. Yeah. And for me, yeah. it's the calendar. That has yeah. become key to my life. Um, just knowing that things are scheduled and that, okay, this is when I really need to be focused on this. This is when I have a little free time. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I love my calendar. I, and I resisted it. I resisted it for such a long time. Yeah, do you schedule your free time? I do. I schedule in, um, uh, yeah, I do. I schedule in a little bit of free time. Not always, but I try to every week um, put, put some of that in there. Yeah, that's important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, everybody needs their downtime because if we're going, 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 we don't have that time to just focus on ourselves and our quiet. Um, so, you know, I especially, you know, in business, I really value my weekends and my you know, really my downtime and it's learning to say no. Yes. That, <laughs> said, oh, I say which, yes to <laughs> affirm her. Yeah. Affirm you. <laughs> <laughs> but learning to say no was one of the most um, freeing things that I did because it's like, no, and you don't need to offer an explanation as to why mm -hmm. it's just no because you know that that's your time. Yeah. Yeah, Sunday has become very, very sacred to me. Here in Latin America, it's very common, just like in Japan, for people to work Monday through Saturday. So the weekend, the two-day weekend, really doesn't exist here like it does in the United States. Mm -hmm. So Sunday has become an absolute sacred day and I do not do any client calls on Saturday. I do, I mean, on Sunday, I don't, um, I don't schedule, I really don't schedule anything except for joyful interactions uh, with other people during that time. It's just so important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Claim it. Oh, Tracy says, when I get overwhelmed, I leave that thought and go do something I enjoy. That way I can relax and at times go back to the problem with a fresh mind. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's really how we can take care of ourselves. It's just sometimes just table it for a moment. Yep. Walk away. Like you're saying, take the breath, you know, go outside yeah. and put your feet on the ground barefoot yeah. for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess that's whatever it does, whatever it is that brings us back into our bodies. Yeah. Back into the turn, here and now. Turn your face to the sun. Mm. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be a lot. And, you know, it's, keep it simple. It doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <sighs> I feel relaxed already. And it's been a really crazy day. So this has been a really great <laughs> conversation. I definitely have some takeaways to um, bring into my bag of tricks or things that I've been reminded of, right? You know, I think that especially when we're in overwhelm, we're forgetting about the tools that we have in our toolbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We always need to have that toolbox beside us so we can just peek in it every now and again. Right. And say, oh, there's that I tool. I need yeah. that. Yeah. Well, Lana, this has been such a fabulous conversation. If people want to learn more about taking control of their health, 
releasing the overwhelm, the feelings of frustration, how can they get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me actually on my website, through my website. Um, oh, Charlotte says living close to the beach in Costa Rica. <laughs> I will sit or walk on the beach and listen to the rhythm of the waves. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, so jealous. 10 minute yeah. nap, hot shower yeah, you know, that's... water with stevia drop. Great. Oh, perfect. Go ahead, Lana. Yeah, that's interesting about the beach. Yeah, that's interesting about the beach because actually going to the beach and the ebb and the flow of the water actually raises your serotonin levels, which makes you happy. So, um, that's awesome. I wish, I really wish I would live closer to the beach. Um, so, uh, what a wonderful opportunity. Um, so, but anyway, how they can reach me, um, my website is www.mypersonalrn.com. Great. And everyone, and Lana is a, go ahead, sorry. I keep talking. On no, I saw all of my other contact information is there. So, <laughs> okay. So say that one more time for us. www. My personal RN. M Y P E R S O N A L R N dot com. Yep. Awesome. And Lana's a member of our Love Yourself Now tribe on Facebook, so you can always reach out to her and um, private message her through that forum as well. Um, if you just have a quick question for her or something, that might be a nice way just to reach out and uh, make yeah. the introduction. Yeah, Lana, this has yeah, been perfect. really fun tonight. I really enjoyed yeah. talking to you. I've had a blast. Thank you so much. And, you know, just all of the comments and the suggestions. Um, I love it. Gosh, somebody, um, who's that? Charlotte, um, take a walk on the beach for me. You too, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we've got, we've got some people from Panama in the house. We've got some, a lot of people from Costa Rica in the house. Of course, the United States, Arizona's in the house. People from all over. It's really fabulous. And I yeah. just want to give a reminder to my tribe as well. Um, I want to let everyone know that I am doing a live replay of my talk, uh, the three uh, life-changing habits to quiet the inner critic for good. I'll be doing that again on the 16th of May at 5 p.m. And you are welcome to go find the link on my personal page or on the uh, Love Yourself Now tribe page and register through Eventbrite, and it's uh, going to be hosted on Zoom. It's a fabulous talk, and the, the version I gave uh, a couple weeks ago was, was really great, had a lot of good comments from that, so I'd love to see you there. It's free. It's my gift to the, the, to the Lynn tribe to say thanks for being a part of my life. I love you so much, so yeah. So, Lana, I'm going to see you on the other end of this, and, uh, you know, we're going to be doing some really fun things together in the future, I'm sure of it. This is yeah, just absolutely. Awesome. All right, with that, I'm just going to say goodnight to everybody. If you have further questions, go ahead and type them in the comments, and Lana and I will both see them, and we will be able to respond uh, to your to your comments or your questions over the next couple of days as well as they come in and people are looking at the replay. Bob, you are very welcome. Larry, sorry, we're just at the end. Dominique, sorry, we're just closing up shop, but thank you for joining us. Anyways, we'll be back here again next Friday. I'm sorry, next Tuesday with another talk, so stay tuned. Yeah. Okay, Lana. Thank you so much and good night to everybody. Good night.